Hey guys, thanks for tuning in. Today we're going to discuss the different coil options that were offered for modern BMWs. Starting over here on the left, we have a parts store special that is basically a Chinese coil that has a, a longer warranty through one of your local auto parts stores. They typically vet all the different variants and then choose one that's somewhat reliable and you can get it right off the shelf at your local auto parts store. That's one of these here. This is a Duralast coil that I got from AutoZone. So I used this for a while. It's not terrible. It gets the job done um, and it's easily accessible at your local auto parts store. Now, from about 2003 and onward, all BMWs started coming with this type of coil. It's called a pencil coil and it'll have this single plug up at the top. It doesn't bolt in, it just basically fits snug over the coil. It doesn't even click down at the bottom. They just designed this to fit snug against the wall of the cylinder head and get you a seal. So this is a Bosch coil that they ran, um, I'm thinking till about 2010 or 11, something along those lines. But then I think they had an unacceptable failure rate, so they moved away from it. If you go to the dealer and ask them for a coil, they may still try to sell you one of these, depending, um, just because it was what came on your car originally, but all these are compatible with any of the modern ECUs. So that's a Bosch coil, no longer the recommended option. Then they moved away from that to a Delphi coil, which was a significant upgrade. And even some of the guys that are running high horsepower cars got away with this. Uh, I'm one of those guys that has a tuned car an N54 twin turbo, and this uh, would hold its own. I've never even put this on my car. I got it out of my uh, other car here, I'll show you. So this is my F15X5, and I just grabbed it out of here for the sake of this video. Pulled it out. If I had to guess the majority of viewers that are watching this probably have this coil, and chances are you got to a good 100,000 miles before it's, it's gonna let go on you. Pretty reliable. It's a good coil, but they've moved away from this. Starting in late 2015, early 2016, this was the OEM coil for all modern BMWs. Uh, you'll even find this on like a Rolls Royce, Wraith, etc. This coil is supposedly the, the be all end all, the best coil out there right now. So I got these to replace the coils, the factory coils in my F15 for maintenance before one of them can go bad because I got 100,000 miles on it, 105,000. So this is gonna be a nice upgrade for that. So this is my 2008 335i making well over 500 wheel horsepower with upgraded turbos. And I had this uh, Duralast coil in there and it was holding up until I put the twin turbos on there. It just couldn't handle the amount of power that this uh, engine was demanding. It was failing and I'd get a misfire primarily in cylinder number six. Just wasn't getting the job done. This Bosch coil came with the car and I haven't run it in a long time, but they, it eventually failed once I went it, it didn't fail where I was getting a misfire just idling. It failed when I was pushing maybe over 400 wheel horsepower when I went to ethanol. Didn't have enough spark energy. For a number of years, people got by by changing out their Bosch coil with this coil, the Delphi coil. And uh, it holds its own, but it, it may not keep up. You can barely make the type of power that this car is making right now. So, and it's got high mileage on it. I'm replacing it for maintenance. So regardless, it's not going in there to prove anything but I have this Eldor coil, which I got for the F15 to replace for maintenance. But from what I've read, it can handle 600 wheel for quite a while. It's pretty strong. So just to prove that this is the next best thing, I'm gonna put it in this car right now and I'll show you what I have in there now so that we can see are these decent or not. A way to gauge quality in my opinion is the weight of the coil. So here's the Duralast AutoZone Special in grams, 204 grams. Now here's your Bosch factory coil, 233 grams. The Delphi coil, 246 grams. And then the Eldor coil, 263. So there's more going on internally. There's more windings, but also there's this metal jacket around it that is probably contributing to the weight, but you know, it's a sign of quality. Something to keep in mind when you buy these uh, Chinese coils is if you put if you don't put grease around the edge of this, when you're pulling it out 
change your spark plugs, it will tear. It will actually grip the sidewall of the car because it's so rubbery and rip and then it's no good. So I've had to change a couple of these under warranty for that very reason. So this is not a proper design in my opinion. And then the Bosch coil looks very similar, but it's a much more hard plasticky rubbery type coating. So it's not likely to ever tear here. It almost feels like plastic, but with a bit of a rubber grip to it. So a lot of guys use these for many years, but if your car came with this and you think Bosch is good quality, and you don't want to mess around and you want to get the same thing, I wouldn't. It's not going to be advantageous to you. Another thing is these uh, pins in here are pretty thick and robust. If you look at the pins that come in these AutoZone specials, they're very thin, and much smaller. But between the other coils, they're all the same. The Eldor, etc. the pins are thick and decent looking. Now we'll start with some of the dimensions. They're very similar from what I can tell, but here is the Duralast, 27.3 in the body, at the tip, 14.1. And on the inside, 3.1. The Bosch coil, 27.1, 15.1, same, 3.1. The Delphi coil, 26 actually, 16.3, 3.9. So a bit of a thicker tip to grip the spark plug. And they moved to this metal shielding. There must have been a known design flaw without having this, so they went to this to improve the odds of it lasting and the Eldor coil has the same thing. 27.4, 16.7, 3.8. You can see the design of the tip there. It's a little, kind of ramps down a little more gradually so it's a bit stiffer. And then compared to the Bosch coil that was really thin. Then the Duralast, super thin, but it, it, they work. If you're not heavily tuned, this will work, but it may not last as long as uh, the Eldor or the Delphi. From what I've read and seen, these are very respectable, but BMW still des decided that they're gonna move to a standard coil. And if you had to ask me, it's because the newer cars are pushing more power. These are being used OEM and Rolls Royce is making over 600 horsepower. So they just wanted to standardize. They made them backwards compatible, but also designed to handle more power. To prove that this is a good coil, you know, regardless of the fact that it's heavier, thicker, looks more robust and whatnot, we're gonna put this in my 335 twin turbo that's making well over 500 wheel to see, can it hold the power? Will it misfire? Because if I put any of these in there, I don't know about this one, but those other two, guaranteed to misfire at the top of third. There's just no chance it wouldn't. So, and I'll show you what solution I have on that car. If this checks out and after a couple of days it's, it's holding its own and it's not misfiring, then then that will demonstrate that this is actually better than what's out there. And you guys should really consider getting the newest Elder coil. I'm going to put the part number for this on the screen and a link in the description and affiliate link where you can buy these. After all that said and done, we're going to throw it in the N55 X5 just for maintenance. I'm sure some of you guys would like to see this. I'm not sure how much this is going to demonstrate quality, but we're going to measure the primary resistance on these. 0.9 for the Duralast OEM Bosch. 0.9 Delphi. 0.9 Eldor. 0.9. So no discernible difference amongst the coils in terms of primary resistance. Secondary resistance, starting with Duralast coil. So the top pin, I think maybe my meter's not powerful enough to do this properly, but we can compare amongst them. I'm showing 136 kilo ohms. So I'm not sure if my meter is powerful enough to handle this, but 136 kilo ohms doesn't seem right, but it is what it is. You'll be able to gauge between them. So that's your Duralast special. We'll move on to the Bosch coil. And these are functional coils, so we're getting 41 for the Bosch. The Delphi coil, 
102. And for anyone wondering, this material I'm using doesn't have any resistance. Zero. 96.7 or 97. So similar to the Delphi. If you guys are testing, maybe you can use this video to help you figure out if you have a bad coil, but chances are if you're doing it because it's not keeping up power-wise on like an N54, um, it's not gonna just fail and short out. It's gonna just not make the spark energy you need given they degrade over time. So we're gonna put this in the N54, see if they're up to the task and eventually toss them in the N55 for maintenance. All right, so let's get the cover off my N54 here. So there you'll see my aftermarket coil solution, spool performance coils that are up to the task of handling well in excess of 700 wheel. Kind of overkill even for my power goals, but these are, uh, you know, the way you do it if you don't have enough spark energy from your factory coil. These are very heavy and there is a huge coil in there to generate good at spark energy, but they're coming out right now. Just so we can try the Eldors. My spark plugs are gapped at 0.20. So a little bit wider than you could normally get away with, with regular coils, unless you had some of these newer generation coils, maybe a Delphi or this, but we're gonna try it. Since I had more powerful coils on there, I left it at uh, 0.20, just to get a little bit better fuel economy if possible, instead of 0.18. So a tiny bit of dielectric grease on the end of the coil. It's a very snug fit. You can hear the metal touching the side. It has a nice definitive click. Best feeling coil so far in terms of OEM style. The snap is good too. That's a big improvement over what I had in there. Here's what's on the box when you buy one of these. It's gonna be hard to make it out, but if you look on there, it says PBT-GF303, minor mixture of three and four. That's what you wanna to to look for to know you got a, a proper coil. All right, I'm gonna give her the start now. All right, runs smooth, just as expected. Uh, let's go take it for a test drive now, and then we'll summarize. Side, unfortunately so I can't really push things uh, I'm just breaking traction even when I hammer it at like 50 miles an hour but overall quite satisfied with that they have no problem I can tell on the two to three shift the way it shifted it's not losing any spark energy it's more than uh, up to the task of handling this tune so I actually hoped that this video would be generic for all BMWs, anything from 2003 onward. Are you wondering if you should be replacing your ignition coils uh, proactively? Yeah, you should do them at about 100,000 miles. But if you want to hold off until they fail, you can get different life expectancies out of them depending on what brand they are. So I'm going to say go for the Eldor coils. They're the most modern version. BMW uses them on all their new cars. They're heavier. They make more power from what I've proven in this video here. So hopefully you guys found this video useful or entertaining. If this is the first video you're catching of mine, consider subscribing. I do upload regularly. Thanks for watching.